Okay, guys, real quick, before we get started, Hello Games has sent me raw footage of the, the footage that you've been seeing all over the internet, and I'm going to do something different with it than anybody else has. Uh, they sent it to me to use it in the background of my videos, and, well, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to play the footage that you've been seeing everywhere, but I'm not going to talk in it. I'm not going to have music playing in it. You're going to be able to hear every single sound effect that is in this gameplay footage of Sean Murray playing the game. So I'm going to be quiet, and then we'll catch you guys after the video, and we're going to go through everything that we've learned, all the new stuff that we've learned about No Man's Sky uh, this past week. So enjoy the video.
my god, though. Like, there's so much there that I didn't even know was there. Like, when you're watching him actually play the game, you don't hear any of that because everyone's talking and there's, like, a bunch of... A bunch of... Well, obviously, it was... Most of it was during interviews and stuff, so you didn't really hear, like, in-depth a lot of the stuff that was going on in the game. Right, yeah. And... What I what I really thought was cool was the music when he's inside the galactic map. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> that is just it, it was the so, sound effects. It was so sci-fiishly creepy. I loved it. I know. Yeah. I wanted the to sound live. effects are spot on. Yes, I wanted to live in that song that was being played <laughs> in the galactic map. I just wanted to nestle up and just say, "Leave me alone, guys. Shut the door." <laughs> but no, those <laughs> animal sounds, man. You know. I've already seen the footage, you know, we, all of us have, um, but when I'm sitting there, I was listening to it, my mouth was open the entire time, and I'm like, oh, I cannot believe what I'm hearing, <laughs> and it's all right. procedurally generated, you know, the whole thing. Okay, so wow, No Man's Sky, a lot of information came out um, during E3 and even after, uh, the uh, journalist who got a chance to speak with uh, Sean Murray and Hello Games, um, with all their articles and stuff trickling down uh onto the internet and lots of good stuff and we're going to be going over a lot of a lot of the things that came out over this past last week on this episode and then we are going to be doing an all we know about no man's sky episode next week or maybe even this week okay for if so if you see no man's sky and uh you stumbled upon it and then you searched it on youtube and you come across this video and you come across me um we are a No Man's Sky fan channel. We've built a really big community. Uh, we've got ExploreNMS.com, link is below, and uh, a lot of great people here. These are not just subscribers. When you subscribe to this channel, you're not just uh, a sub. You're part of this community. We're growing big, and we're very compassionate about this game, and it's a really cool place to be. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the ships. Uh, the ships have slots that you can craft and add tech to, and you will have to choose between how much tech and how much cargo to carry because they use the same slots. Uh, the technologies can take up a slot in your inventory. Uh, that's how you upgrade your ship, your suit, your weapon, and those technologies are effectively gone if uh, you sell those things and get a new one then you'll have to build them again that is crazy you know i mean that that's cool to me i mean but you work hard and you build those technologies and you add them to the slots of your ship and or your suit or, or no of your ship and then when you sell it you get a brand new ship with empty slots right so, and to so, craft these technologies um you need blueprints which you can find in buildings on planets wow so we can go inside the buildings not only that but we can look for things and pillage those buildings like blueprints will be in there. I wonder what else is in there. And they said something about loot drops. And then one of the, in the trailer, or not trailer, but the gameplay, you could see a couple of those little loot drops in our technology squares or whatever inside the ocean in one of the scenes. But Oh, yeah. It's really cool. The interface, apparently you can craft or create slash build your hyperdrive According to the PlayStation Access, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the first I'm hearing, because he said that you would have to buy another ship that had a hyperdrive. He and did. Here, I guess they've, you know, they've changed it, and um, now we can build our own hyperdrive. So it looks, <laughs> Roman <laughs> Apples, Roman Apples has been saying it all along, build his hyperdrive. I can't wait to find out how long it's going to take me to build my hyperdrive, and we've been correcting him. Over and over and over again, but <laughs> look. But he he was right the whole time. Yeah. Well, you know, he he wasn't right back then, but he's right now. He was right, but he didn't know it. Yeah, exactly. Neither did we. Neither did we. <laughs> <laughs> I just um, thought that was funny when I seen that. Yeah. Well, the UI also kind of resembles Destiny's in the fact that it's nice and sleek and clean. Yes. Yeah, and on the right-hand side, you got whatever you're working on, like zoomed in, and then on the left-hand side, you got all the slots that uh, that they're working on, and uh, the there's different pages, I guess, or different uh, categories of it. Uh, it's mm -hmm. multi-tool, suit, ship, and encyclopedia. And the multi-tool, you know, on the pages, obviously we know what that'll do: upgrade your multi-tool, upgrade your suit on the suit section, and ship on the ship section. Ooh, that was hard. 
but the encyclopedia um, is what you know Sean's kind of referring to as like a Pokedex. Uh, and it, there's there's something that uh, Sean Murray equates to uh, a complicated Pokedex, though I think think of it as a new kind of hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy. Every creature, element, planet, or cool thing that you find gets placed in a grid in your own digital encyclopedia. Also, uh, will also give you fun facts about the highest mountain that you've been to and things like that. Sort of like, sort of like on Grand Theft Auto, right? Yeah, like when you uh, open up your stats and it tells you like how far you've traveled by swimming or by running, or how many civilians you've murdered, things like that. That's cool. That's really cool, man. That that is really cool. Um, when you discover new items, you have to upload them to a beacon to ensure that they're stored uh, for the for the life of the game. Even if you get pummeled to death by an irate zebra-striped slug creature with four-legged horns, it's still um, you, it's still your information <laughs> as long as you get it with four-legged four four-legged horns. Did I say that? Yeah. I'm leaving it in there. I'm leaving it in okay. there. Okay. <laughs> How does something have four-legged horns? Four-legged horns. No okay. man's guy, baby. When, so when you're uploading things okay. to the beacon, you're, 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 you're uploading it to the atlas. Now, now IGN has changed the spelling of it. They spelled it, you know, a lot, you know, the correct way, the A-T-L-A-S. But here lately, they've been spelling it A-T-L-U-S. Um, so I don't know if uh, Hello Games told them that that's how Hello Games is going to go about, you know, spelling it. Maybe just to be cool, then just. Well, know, I think right I think they're really cracking down. They're really cracking down on the names of things now, because uh, we know now that the Guardian robots or the Malevolent Force, so to speak, is um, they're actually called the Sentinels. Yeah, exactly. And you know, early on, he was talking about how they were a malevolent force. In Game Informer, they said the Malevolent Force is not so malevolent after all. It turns out that they're guardian peacekeeping robots. Well, now we have a name for them. And they will attack you for doing bad things on a planet. You know, destroying the planet, you know, killing animals, even in self-defense. Uh, we'll talk about that later, though. Guys. Yeah. So uh, now we're going to talk about mining. You collect materials to use in crafting and upgrades for your gun, suits, and spaceship. Uh, you can find blueprints to craft new tech. And also sell these minerals and variation at various trading posts for units to buy nicer guns, suits, and spaceships. This also kind of ties into craft. You can craft the elements of the minerals together and create, you know, like a a compound, you know. Right. Yeah. And um, and you can sell that for maybe a higher price at a different space station, and get a little bit more money for it. And then, I I think that's kind of how the the trading works, you know, if you want to be a trader. Starting from scratch and mining a planet for resources. Oh, building on each new element to craft bigger and better weapons and gadgets. So you can eventually upgrade your ship. As I said, you can use it in crafting. And I remember reading somewhere where it actually said that you can see uh, in the encyclopedia or Pokedex, as he calls it, um, <laughs> that you can kind of see what elements are needed for what. So I think it, it'll it kind of give you like hints of recipes, sort of like discovering um, abilities to craft like in H1Z1. Right. Like you take two, you take two of them and you put them into a, a slot and then you hit discover or something like that. And then it's exactly. like, oh, you can build this, this, and this out of these two things. Yeah. Or you need two heridium to finish this craft. <laughs> right. So one of the coolest things, and I mean, like, in my own opinion that I've heard over the last couple days was losing your ship, the losing the ship part about <laughs> it said that, like, after uh, 20 minutes of people playing, that they would lose their ship. Mm -hmm. And that was really interesting. Like, uh, Sean Murray used to have Hello Games used to have a, a way to call your ship to you. Um, but he took that out because he said it was stupid. But. After roughly two minutes, uh, well, one reporter had said he had completely and absolutely, without a doubt, lost his ship. He asked Sean Murray how to find it, and uh, Sean Murray told him to press the square on the DualShock 4 uh, to send out a golden arc that sweeps over the planet and provides markers on your topside compass, including the location of your ship. Uh, the Golden Ray also is your exploration tool. 
picking up and categorizing the animals and elements directly around you. But what's really cool is that after a while, people start using the lay of the land to get back and forth using landmarks. So like Sean Murray gave an example, um, if you wanted to go to a mountain, after a while, people started using, it was instinctively using like the right side of a river and they knew the river would flow all the way down to the mountain so they would only stay on the right side of that river so that way when they got all the way down there they would say okay to get back to my ship all i did was i okay there's that rock there i crossed that rock and then i go back over here to the right side of the river what's left now since i'm going back and then i just fall that all the way back up my ship should be up there at the at the top of the hill that is really cool. It is. I mean, that 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 is like the most explorer, explorer-y thing that I've heard so far. Yeah, I mean, just think about it, guys. Just think about how much of an adventure that is if you stray too far and you get into it's, trouble. It sounds it sounds so immersive. Yeah, I mean, you could totally see yourself being kept away from your ship, from you know, with by trouble, by something scary or the. Uh, sentinels or whatever and you just you want to get back you. to your ship yeah amazing amazing stuff right there i just yeah it is i love it what a level ship landing yes yeah, that's we're on the topic of ships <clears throat> and the ship landing uh bookshelf landing is super easy you just press the triangle and the spaceship will find the next suitable spot and drop down how do you feel about that mm, i'll definitely be able to live with it but I would much prefer like a land your own ship type of thing where you uh, choose your own spot. Well, I you can choose your own spot, obviously. But like, uh, you know, like manually land your ship. Yeah. So like, yeah. if I if I wanted to land over over across the stream over here, then I could just go over there and lower my ship down, go however fast I want, you know. Um, but you know, just like pressing a button. It, it takes away I don't I don't really know what it takes away but it takes away something you know, but you know I felt the same way too at first but if you think about it it's the future you know so we have cars that are starting to park themselves oh some, some cars are even driving themselves now the Google car and there's a couple True. Other ones so I guess it doesn't really I started to feel a little bit okay about it the more I thought about it like mm -hmm. okay yeah it's a it's the future you know I press a button and it auto lands so what big deal. i never really thought about that either until just now yeah that's I, actually a really good point there yeah it, it's fine i mean i'm sure there's going to be quite a few people upset about it but just think about it guys it's the future <laughs> it also includes a wanted meter that calls deadly robotic security forces if you murder any of the native wildlife on any planet similar to grand theft auto wow uh if you look back in that footage of sean playing the game mm -hmm. when the uh when the sentinels start coming after him, he actually has a wanted level up in the corner. Does he really? Um, I went back and I looked and I couldn't see it. Yeah, I heard, I, I read it in a couple of the articles. They said that it was there, but I never actually decided to go back and look. Yeah, I'm going to have to look harder because I, I did go back and look and I didn't see it. Um, maybe I'm just missing it. I don't know. Okay. Well, the first responders are tiny floating drones that emanate light and shoot lasers. Killing one also took a uh, yeah. Killing one also took a single shot, immediately raising his wanted level. Uh, two more drones fly in, followed by an ATAT -AT like walker. Wow! You can lose your wanted level by trying to escape. There is even galactic police in space. Uh, you can get a wanted level up there too, um, or out there. <laughs> I guess it's more appropriate. Um, there's even a military that will come after you if you start attacking the galactic police. Think large freighters. Yikes. That is the coolest thing. I know. <laughs> Everything is the coolest thing with this game. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, But yeah, the military, dude. The that military. is so cool. I don't even know how you would stand you, up against Do you think that. Like, like the military could send in like large freighters that have like huge guns on them and then they're spewing out tiny little military ships that come and shoot you and everything? Oh, that'd be awesome. Just think of, the, think of the scene. Yeah. And, and some of the oh, old man. footage we've seen, those big freighters like uh, crashed on the planet. Even one was flying on the planet. So I wonder if that's still a possibility yeah. after the game has changed so much. Oh, I hope so. Oh, I hope so. I hope the, so much. <laughs> respawning in the game has changed a lot, too. 
Uh, if you die, you lose any discoveries that you did not upload to a beacon, and you lose any uh, minerals or resources or whatever that you're carrying uh, in your like backpack slot, is what they're calling it, uh, that you have in your storage spots. Um, if you die in space, you lose your ship and you respawn at the space station. So you're not respawning in a life pod ship anymore. You're respawning inside a space station, walking around. What happens if you don't have money to buy a new ship? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's like a, a loner there, like a little clunk clunk uh, piece of crap loner. <laughs> oh, maybe. It's the loner. <laughs> what movie is that from? Darn it. Also, not to mention respawning. Once, well, once you die, a little Jaden Smith quote or philosopher quote, uh, depending on which one you get, will pop up on the screen. So that, I thought that was interesting. What do you think about that? I thought it was pretty f funny. That's that's how I'm, that's how I'm gonna word it right now. <laughs> I just I'm just gonna say it was, I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> also, when you die, if you're on a planet, um, you you will respawn next to your ship. Um, considering that you know, Cons what if it gets destroyed too on a planet? Right. Considering that you don't crash it. Yeah. Then, then you'll probably <laughs> respawn on a on a ground station. Yeah, see, that's one of the first things I'm going to do when I get the game. Um, Just kill I wanna, yourself? Yeah, I want to kill myself. I want to <laughs> see what I want to see what respawning looks like. I want to see what death looks like. I want to see how hard it is to die. Um, Your first quote? Yeah, well, oh, God, yeah. I want my first <laughs> quote. Oh, that'd be great. All right, that's it, guys. So remember, when you're playing No Man's Sky, you will encounter warring factions, black holes, and weird discoveries. As always, I do love you guys. We will be making an all we know about No Man's Sky video coming soon, and I will be uploading the video by itself with all the sounds in it um, for everyone to enjoy. Share it out, you know, just share it out and put it anywhere. Copy and paste it in Bill Gates' uh, Twitter feed. I don't care. Wherever you want to put it. <laughs> That reminds me of the time you tweeted Mark Zuckerberg when you oh were drunk. Oh my gosh, that was just horrible. <laughs> I'm never drinking and being near a computer ever again. <laughs> and guys, always remember, always remember, please. How can mirrors be real when our eyes aren't? Until next time.